Well, sorry about that. Sorry about being a minute late. I actually went live for a couple minutes on the wrong page. Boy, do I feel silly now. But um, this is sort of an afterthought, so don't expect anything too formal or too well thought out. Um, it's just Easter's one of these holidays that sort of sneaks up on you, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, I'm here with Juanita. She's the clinical supervisor wow. for Blue Water Hospice, and uh, we thought we'd just, you may have met her, so if she, look, so if she looks familiar, you, you know her name now. But um, we thought we'd do a, you know, a little something because, as I mentioned a second ago, Easter's one of those holidays that sort of sneak up on you. That uh, we all recognize, you know, Christmas, we understand that's hard with grief and, you know, the challenges that come with that. But sometimes we don't give a lot of thought to other holidays. And uh, they sort of take us by surprise because even with other holidays, we've had traditions that we used to do. Like ours is uh, Peep Wars. And I don't know if I just explained that, but I'm gonna explain it again. Peeps, Peeps for Easter like I said to the, to the other group, is because nothing says he is risen like sugary marshmallow treats. They're wonderful. I can't have them because I got the diabetes. But uh, we, do, we do peeps wars where you take your peep and you set it on a plate and you put a toothpick in it like you're, like you're jousting and uh, you set it on your paper plate. Your opponent picks their peep and their toothpick sets it on a paper plate. You put it in a microwave crank the microwave up, and as they're cooking, which just takes a few seconds, they swell up and they move. So the one who, toothpick who touches the other peep is the winner and you move on to the next to the next round. It's a lot of fun, it's a stupid tradition, but we do it. And I guess that's the thing about some of these other holidays. We have little traditions that we didn't realize that we miss, and when someone's gone, we've got this empty space to fill. So we've got an idea that uh, this morning that, that may help with some of that. We, uh, just because someone's gone doesn't mean we can't honor them, that we can't share some memories. So while, while we're talking here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick one of these up to uh, decor, decorate. Now I got the plastic eggs, so I didn't feel like boiling eggs this morning. I said, this is an afterthought. What color goes, uh, let's, go, let's go with red and make it fun. Yeah, especially if you got kids. And that's what I've been doing over here, guys, when you <laughs> see me looking down. I'm not, I'm not very good at coloring. I can't keep in, inside the lines. <laughs> when, it's an egg. There's no line. <laughs> that, that's the problem, so I've got to freehand this. Just a thought, too. You know, you have, for those who have younger kids, they can't always explain very well what it is that they're missing or why they're, they understand they miss mom or dad or brother and sister or grandpa. And they don't know how to verbalize and you'll see them withdraw a little bit sometimes. And, and as parents, we want to get them to talk through everything. Sometimes that's just not the best idea. So, you know, just the same as sometimes I need a break and I'll walk away and just go have some solace time, some alone time. Kids need, kids need that too. So one thought is to, uh, it, they're not gonna be able to explain that to you, you know, because they don't understand it themselves. They understand that something's wrong. So we make up a code word that the kid knows. When the kid says this code word, that means everything's, everything stops, they can go be by themselves or whatever it is they wanna do for a few minutes. You know, they're dealing with something, and that way they don't have to, it, they don't have to try to talk through it. They just need some time to themselves to be able to, to deal with it. That's a great idea. Well, I wish I would have come up with it, but I, you know, I'm, I will plagiarize anything if it's a good idea. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Um, so one of the things would, would that, it, and I did this at Christmas, not with eggs. We did it with stockings. It, it, we had the family write down memories on a slip of paper on a 
and then put it in. We set up like in, in my case, my mother. You know, Christmas w without her, it just and it just it was different. I didn't like it, but I still wanted to include her some way and be involved. So we went around the, you know, the grandkids, the you know, me and my brother and, and the wives. Um, we wrote down on a piece of paper some memory. It doesn't have to be an exhaustive. Could be a stupid little thing, and. Uh, we would pull those out and someone was the official reader and would read the memory. We only spent maybe 10 minutes on the whole thing, but it was kind of a nice way. And it was really nice for my dad because his Christmas without, you know, his wife of 66 years, he was able to talk about her a little bit and it's like she was a part of, of mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, you know, so uh, why, not, why not do the same thing with these, with these eggs? Um, so you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop coloring on this because I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it right. Well, You're just going to end up hitting me with a marker. Yeah. I can see it coming. <laughs> well, it's payback. Um, <laughs> so I did. I'll do one maybe, and I know Juanita done has done some. Now I knew uh, Juanita's family. I've known Juanita for for years, and you know everybody has losses that are unique to them. Maybe it's a spouse, a parent, a sibling. Um, see, who have I got? I, I pre-did a couple. I'm going to read. i got to put on my old man's glasses for this. Oh, this is my nephew, for my nephew, Jonathan. Uh, and I wrote, Jonathan, he liked to blow up things with firecrackers and a potato gun. <laughs> that was that was Jonathan. It, uh, you know, interesting he became a company commander for an artillery unit, you know, and he was he was killed in the in the service. But I all that, and I post about Captain Weinkoop and all this stuff. Uh, he's he's my nephew. He'll always be that little kid. But I remember him with a potato gun, just taking firecrackers and would blow up anything that he could get away with without his parents knowing. And I see you instigating that. <laughs> I no. I'm going to plead the fifth here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's see. What do I have here? Uh, for me, um, one of the fine memories in this is upcoming Easter dinner. Um, Mom would always make a huge um, ham, brown sugared ham um, dinner in the whole family, all my siblings, and um, we would all meet at Mom and Dad's. Um, and that was just... Um, just nice to be together, and I miss some days. Oh, I'm hungry now, <laughs> too. I, I love ham. Um, I won't go into it now, the traditions you know, of, of Easter that have come about. What in the world does an egg, does a bunny, does a ham have to do with us celebrating the resurrection? I can't get into it now but it's because it, it's too lengthy, but if you really want to know, Email me at bobthechurchbuilder at gmail.com. We can have a conversation. There's really quite a history behind it. Some of it's, some of it's kind of morbid. You don't look at things the same way, but I don't want to ruin it for you. I still have fun with it. Just because someone started, something started out with an origin that was bad, well, we'll turn, we'll turn around and make it good and make it, make it fun. Let me see what else we got here. A pretty star because that's about all I could draw. Oh, this was my my grandfather, my mother's dad. He was a World War One vet. He was born in 1899, and wow. that really makes me feel old. But he died back in the 60s. I remember he was a, when I was a kid used to sit on his lap, and our thing together is we watched uh, Gunsmoke. So I still love Festus. Wasn't as much a Chester fan for you old people who remember Dennis Weaver as Chester, but, but that was fun. Mine's a flower, and again, not pretty by any means. Um, that was one thing in high school um, this memory serves, is I was two weeks into an art class, um, and my instructor encouraged me to seek out homemaking. <laughs> so do not expect pretty pictures coming from me. Um, this one is 
Um, Isn't that like joining the football team and they say, well, you'd really be good at that. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so I don't do anything artistic by any means. Um, this one is, I personally, I've had a lot of loss, um, so I understand where you guys are coming from. Um, I've lost three siblings, both my parents um, and a mother-in-law that I was extremely close with. Um, Bob has been by my side through most of that. Um, Bob and I worked hospice in a different company, so that's where our connection came from. Um, but this is for my brother. Um, he made chili, and I have never found um, some, or it wasn't chili actually, sorry, it was um, bean soup. Ooh. And yes, I, have, I can never find anyone who's made bean soup like him. Um, and um, so whenever I do see bean soup, um, it's an instant reminder of Bob for me. Oh, well, you know, I'll tell this story on a side note. I, we worked at two other hospices together mm -hmm. over the years. And I didn't, I was, I had an interview set up with the regional manager or whatever for this one hospice. And, uh, uh, you know, the bosses were going to be there. So I put on my, my jacket and tie, which I don't usually, usually do. But for an interview, I wanted to respect it. So I'm in there, and I didn't know that Juanita worked there. She, you were an on-call nurse, I believe, at that time. I started time. originally as a case manager with them, and oh, okay. then it went into the on-call role. I don't remember. I think it was on-call when you came in. Well, I so I'm sitting there, and she walks by, with all all these people in there ready to start the interview, and she said, "Bob." I said, "Juanita." <laughs> we give each other a hug. She looked at them. She said, "This man did the funeral for my father, for my mother." and for my brother. Yeah. You hire him now. And I thought, man, that's like the perfect timing of a, of a recommendation. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's weird the things that we remember that, that sort of stick out to us. Let me find, I got one more in here, if I can, if I can find it. Let's see, what is this one? Oh, that's the one I already, I already did. Let's see. Uh, you throw yours back in? Well, uh, I must have. Oh, here we go. I did a little flower on this one. This one, this one's for my mom. It, it, and it is weird, the things that you re remember that make you smile. Um, mom always threatened me. Now, if you knew my mom, she was a frail little thing. You know, she could hunt bear with a switch if she needed to, but she was, she was a little, I'm, you know, I'm adopted. So I, you know, I'm six foot five, you know, they are nowhere near my size. And I remember when I was 13, I must've did something wrong. I'm assuming I did something wrong. I did a lot of stuff wrong. And she was trying to swap me across the face. Well, I just sort of leaned back and she couldn't reach. And she got mad. She said, would you quit blocking? I said, no, I'm not going to let you just hit me. But one of the things she, she always, she had two threats that she, that she always threatened me with. She never followed through with them, um, but she always threatened it. One, this little wonderful conservative Christian lady was always going to A, beat me till the blood runs down my legs. That was her one thing. Or she was gonna come at me with the fly swatter. She never did, but it, it was enough of a threat to, you know, to keep me honest. You know, and I, I miss those, I miss those times. But it, the, the memories aren't the ones that you would expect. It's the little things. Hence, you know, the little things on the holiday, ham, bean, soup oh and i love some bean soup i've noticed that uh your memories uh seem to be around dinner <laughs> this is true mine too this is true i have one last memory and i try to do a cross and a heart again artistic isn't my forte um this one is if i can get it open here it's child proof yes uh old country music um that brings back for me um we used to have a place up north a cabin up north um and when i hear the old country songs 
it just reminds me of mom and dad and mm -hmm. traveling up north and and singing with them and and stuff so that always brings me home when I hear the old time country songs going up north what a what a Michigan thing where was the cabin at up north um McKinley oh you're way up north. Yeah. yeah um and then they ended up uh when they sold the cabin um they actually did a campsite uh seasonal campsite and just outside of Glenny oh how fun um, is that yeah and that's actually where I go, um, thankfully, my husband has uh, fallen in love uh, with the same campground. Um, so we have a seasonal site there. And that's for me, cool. that's just that another memory of, and I feel like I go home. And, and I know mom and dad's in the area. Oh, me. that's that's really cool. Yeah. Well, as you can see, you know, it doesn't have to be, and I'll be honest, I enjoy, I, I have fun with this. I enjoyed uh, the memories. Can, can you get sad with memories? Yes, you can. More often than not, when you're remembering the stupid little things, uh, you'll find yourself smiling more than, more than you're sad. And, you know, it's a good way to include our family in the traditions that we have at, at Easter. Um, so just a, just a thought if you wanted to try that. Um, now I got to go find what I'm going to do with these peeps here. Someone, someone here will chow them down. So, thanks. If you need anything, you can always call the call Blue Water Hospice and be glad to talk to you. We have, we have people here who would uh, love to help. Um, you, and I'll tell you, I tell you my personal email, Bob the Church Builder at Gmail dot com, just because it's easier to remember. So you can always email me. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear your stories too. So, <clears throat> have a great. Easter, remember that he is risen, and my wish for you, as usual, is peace. Talk to you soon.